Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're just gonna take a quick look at the new Paul Rubens watercolor tube sets. They've just come out with two new ones, and um, I have the one with the pink palette. There's also one with the blue palette that has a different assortment of colors, and I will link to that down below so you can take a look and see if either of them would be good for you. Um, I wanted to just do an overview on this. I've reviewed their tube and their pan watercolors before, and I'll link to those videos as well. Um, but I figured since I've been using this a lot and people have been asking me about it, I would just review the set. And uh, this time of year, I think it would be a nice Christmas gift if you know somebody that's looking to get into watercolors, or um, if you're running low on paints and you wanna try a great new palette, this would be really fit the bill. One thing I really like about Paul Rubens products is their packaging is really good. I mean, this one got banged around a little bit here, but they always come in really sturdy boxes. And then once you open it up, like this is a velvet flocked case, um, all of your paints are arranged. Now this is eight milliliter tubes. They have another tube set that doesn't come with a palette that has 15 milliliter tubes. Um, so if you want more paint, you don't need the palette. I would recommend that one. The floral set has a very similar selection of colors, although they're not exactly the same. It comes with this big palette, and um, like I mentioned, I've got the pink assortment, and the blue palette comes with different colors. So just know that you may prefer the blue palette, but you may prefer the colors in the pink palette, and it's just the outside of the palette, so that's up to you. I know a lot of people aren't crazy about the pink palettes that Paul Rubens is known for, but um, I'm more interested in the paint, and I like pink, so it works for me. The thing I thought was really cool about this palette is that the wells are a little different than what I'm used to for watercolor palettes, but I really like this because what I did was I squeezed the paint out, but I put it on one end, and that way I can go in, if I'm like, say, doing a, a large wash and I just need a solid, a single color, what I'll do is I'll add a bunch of water to the well and make myself a big puddle of the color. And if I don't use it all up, because typically what I would do is I would have my well filled with paint, I would bring the paint over to my mixing area, make a puddle as big as I think I need, so I'd make it a little bit bigger so I didn't have to stop and go back and ruin my controlled wash, and then there'd be leftover that I'd have to wipe up and throw away. So if I'm just doing a single color here, I can just let it sit and dry out and come back later and use it again. I don't have to waste any of it. So if you get a palette like this, I recommend just putting some some paint just on one side. Now you can do that in any large wall palette. You could just put the paint in like one quarter or one third of the, of the palette and do that. But I think how it's elongated like this, it just works really well. This does come with a little cleaner um, if you wanted to scrape out your paint. I think this would be more useful if you're using a paint that like dries and doesn't reconstitute, such as a, um, an acrylic and you want to clean your palette. It comes with it. I think this would actually be better to use as a scraper tool, like how I use a credit card scraper, because you, you've actually got a nice handle to hold on to and you could scratch with that. That's what I would use this for. It's got a nice little slot there. But it's actually designed for cleaning out your palette. I don't know which way it goes back in. Watch, I won't be able to get it back in. <laughs> and then, I don't know what this is for. Um, more paint or maybe a little storage tray for a sponge or whatnot. I don't know. Uh, so uh, you could probably pop, oh yeah, I think you can. Uh, do I have something I can do that with? Oh, I got a better butter knife here. You could probably take, yeah, you could take this out. Whoa. And I guess that would be handy if you don't want to have this big thing on your table. And this comes out really easy. You can just pull that out with your fingers. And then you can either use this for mixing area or you could just set that aside and configure this on your desk however you want so that you don't have this. Um, when I'm working, especially upstairs, my, my desk is fairly small. It's a small drafting table, probably more of a child sized drafting table. And uh, oftentimes I'm shoving things off the edge because I don't have enough room to work. So this would be really handy for that. Um, the palette's plastic, it does stain. However, you could use a magic eraser. And I've had um, uh, viewers say they've used toothpaste on their palettes to clean them. And I did do a little mixing in there at one point because I ran out of space. And uh, it stained, but I haven't even tried to really clean it. The paints don't really bead up on the plastic, which is nice. This, I think is very similar to the um, Magello Airtight palettes, but the well configuration is different. I have asked the uh, American seller, the seller that distributes here in America, about selling this palette separately, and I have not heard back yet, but um, I will amend the video description if she gets back to me. So I wanted to show you a couple of the paintings that I've done with this set so you can kind of get an idea for the quality of the paints. They're very transparent, very clean, bright colors. Um, all of the tubes contain a um, like a color name. This says turquoise light in English. And on the... Um, on 
the back of the tube, there is uh, Chinese writing, but there's also the pigment number PB36. So uh, if you are familiar with, this is a cobalt color, if you're familiar with um, the pigment numbering system, you can get, find your way around this set and you could call some colors what you're accustomed to. Like this one is, well, this one's called um, French Ultramarine and that's your PB29. Um, uh, PB29, you know, so it does, there are some very common colors, um, and there's some that you might need to look at the pigments to figure out what exactly you're using here. Indigo is a mix, like uh, it typically is, and uh, I thought the color selection was really interesting, and, and uh, there were a couple colors that were kind of strange. There's a, like a, a light peach apricot color, which actually works really great as a base for fair skin. There's a um, kind of like an opaque mint color there, but the other ones are pretty transparent and pretty uh, customary. So first, let's uh, let's look at a swatch of these colors. Let's see, where did I put that sketchbook with that in it right here? I just swatched it right in my sketchbook I was using for Inktober so that I would have it. This is a swatch of the colors in the set. Um, I put black down so you could see that gr that light green I pointed out is quite opaque. The peach isn't actually that opaque, quite, um, which is surprising for how light it is. Uh, there is a white that you can mix. It's not really an opaque white for highlighting. It's more of a mixing white. And one of the blues is a bit on the opaque side, that lavendery blue color, that periwinkle sort of color. But um, that just gives you an idea of the color. There's your tried and true ultramarine. And then to show you some of the some of the paintings I did with this set, I did this one here, and I did some colored pencil accents on top and some paint pen. Like the white highlights were a paint pen. I did this one here, uh, and it was they were really easy to work with. I was very pleased with how well they were uh, they performed. They I didn't have any issues glazing or layering. And uh, to show you some more glazing examples, I did a long tutorial of this painting here on YouTube, and I did a lot of glazing, and it worked perfectly. And also this one, there's a long tutorial of this on YouTube, and I did quite a bit of glazing, and that also worked really well. Uh, so yeah, these if you have watercolors you're happy with, of course these are not gonna, y you know, give you much benefit adding this to your collection unless there's colors here that you don't have. And that's what I did like about this set is it does have some tried and true colors, great for mixing, but it had a few unique ones that I thought would be interesting. The set in the blue palette has very unusual colors, but. Um, Looking at them, I mean, there are a few that look like they'd be really cool. There's like this purple shadow color, but all in all, I really didn't think I would use the colors in the per in the blue palette that much. So I selected the pink palette when Lightwish contacted me and asked me if I would like to try their new set. And again, these are the Paul Rubens watercolors. They've been popular in China and I think Korea. The watercolor is way more popular in Eastern countries, and so they have a lot more selection and a, and a lot lower prices because it's more of a mass market product uh, that we do here in the United States. So um, it's been a tried and true brand there for a while. It's brought over here by Lightwish on Amazon and um, you might be able to find it on other marketplace sites like that from them. I'm not sure, but this one was from Amazon. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm pretty pleased with it. I've, I enjoyed the pan sets and the tube sets. I feel like the tube sets are a little bit cleaner in color but that's just me. It could be the exact same paint. It's just, you know, I, I don't know. I just found the tube sets to feel a little cleaner. And I just want to let you know about this. They did send me this for free. So just, you know, take that for what it's will. I, I want you guys to know that in case you want to value the opinion a little differently, knowing that I received it for free or if I paid for it with my own money. And I like to make sure you have that information. One other thing I want to mention is that they did just come out with a student set. I think the set, now stuff fluctuates on Amazon. The last I checked, I think the set of the uh, with the pink palette and the tubes or the blue palette was uh, around $65 I think they just came out with a student set of 36 tubes these tubes are I'd say let's see these are probably five milliliter yeah five milliliter I haven't tried them out yet um, but I use their Mi Lang watercolors the pretty excellent ones they are also made by Lightwish or and they are fantastic. They're 20 bucks. It's a steal for 36 colors. So I'm very curious to see how these perform compared to that. So let me know if you want to see a review on these. Um, that's, and again, a nice box. I like that, especially if you're buying a present for somebody and it can be used as storage and it's not going to get dented or damage your paint if you want to keep them in there. You're not going to set something on it and it's going to crush it and then you're going to end up damaging your tubes 
because it's a nice sturdy box. So that's something to consider, especially if you're getting this for um, a new painter that might not have a lot of storage options, might just be, you know, sticking that in a pile on the corner of their desk. It's not going to get crushed. So there you have it, an overview of the new Paul Rubens two paints um, in, the, in their configuration in their new sets. Check them out if you're looking for some good quality watercolors that aren't crazy expensive. Um, and keep your eye out. I've seen the price fluctuate uh, already just in the few weeks since I've had these. I think I've seen the price fluctuate around like from like 10 or $15. So I, I put stuff in the safer later cart and I just keep an eye on it. That's what I do. Um, but there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this overview. Until next time, happy crafting.